This lesson is going to be the start of a project that we're going to work on throughout the whole entire chapter dealing with the uh, the more menu. So we're going to get started on this. I'm going to open up Photoshop and I'm actually I've got a picture of a, uh, a bottled water um, that I'm going to use and we're going to create a label for that water bottle and I'll actually be able to work through most of the the menu issues of, or the menu tools in the more menu. So I'm going to hit uh, start from a from an image or import an image and I'm going to go to my local photos and here's that nice picture of a water bottle right there. So I'm going to select that one. And uh, it's going to take some time. This this picture is pretty big. So some of the things that I do to adjust on this will take some time on the iPad. So here I've got this picture of a, a water bottle with no label. And we're going to actually create a label on this uh, water bottle. So the first step is to uh, create the actual background, the backdrop of the label. And I'm, I, although I'm the chapter focuses on uh, what's found up here in the more menu. Uh, I'm going to be using some tools from all over the place too as well to, to get this job done. So uh, bear bear with me in terms of moving through selections and that kind of, I know those are all later in the chapters and we cover those more in depth in the chapters uh, to come. But there's some skills that, that I'm going to cover very, very quickly uh, when we talk about doing the water bottle. So first and foremost, I need a backdrop for a layer. So I'm going to uh, grab the selection rectangle and again, to, not to reiterate, but now shapes are made with selections, not necessarily. There is no shape tool within Photoshop Touch. So you have to create shapes based on selections. We're going to give this rectangle some rounded uh, corners. So we're going to bead those to 30 pixels. And I'm good there. And what I'm going to try to do, let me expand this a little bit. What I'm going to try to do is make the label the same exact size. If you notice the water ball, it's got a flat space on it where the label once was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to drag a rectangle right around the same size of that flattened out space. So I start from the top left and I drag down to the bottom right. And it's pretty good. I, I can move it. That's not a problem. So I can move it right where I need it. But that's a, a pretty good, uh, I got a pretty good label on the background here. Before I do anything more, I've just made the selection. And what I want to try to do, and again, layers are, are in a different place in the book. Um, but I just want to add a layer here. So I'm going to click on the add layer button and I'm going to say empty layer because in the end I want my label to be all on a separate layer from the bottle. It's going to help me when I start to think about warping ideas and those kinds of things. So I want to make sure my layer is selected over to the right, which it is. Um, I've still got my selection and here we go with fill and stroke, right? So I'm going to go up to the more menu and I'm going to pull up the fill and stroke command. And what you'll notice is at the bottom, I am in stroke mode. If I want to be in fill mode, I would just go over to fill mode and it would fill it in with black. I don't want black. Let's go red just for the heck of it. See what that looks like. So I'm going to fill in the shape with red and I'm going to go back and do the same exact thing. Fill and stroke. And I am going to now move to stroke, which is the, the edge around it. And if I change the color to black, you will see what happens here. So I change it to black. I can actually change the width as well. I'm going to pull this up to roughly seven or eight in that ballpark. And these dialog boxes, you can also click in and you can put in any exact number that you want. So I'm going to click in eight. So that looks pretty good. Uh, while I'm here, let me let me just uh, commit that change. And while I'm here, I'll show you the other pieces that are in the fill and stroke. You've also got noise and clouds. Um, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Noise gives you that kind of a feel where you're, you're basically taking the background color and mixing it in with whatever color you've got in the amount that you've got. So if I slide down the amount, you can see how that affects the noise. I'm not going to commit any of these changes, but the other piece to this is clouds, which is a, a kind of a Photoshop holdover, um, taking two colors, the red and mixing it with black. And that's a nice kind of look and feel there. No adjustments on this whatsoever, but I'm not going to commit any of those. I just wanted to show those to you. Um, so the idea is this, and, and, and talked about it at the beginning, you're actually making shapes now with selections and completely using the fill and stroke command found in, in the more menu. We're going to cover other tools here in, in this chapter, gradients and fades and texts and warps, pretty much everything we're going to cover in here, crop, uh, image size and rotate, I will cover as well in the book, but not necessarily from a lab because we're not going to, uh, we're not going to change the size of this image in any way, shape or form. We're just going to crop it once we're done. But for now, we'll come back with another, uh, another piece to this in a quick second.